Greetings, and welcome to the Open Minded Skeptic Podcast. My name is Sharon Ann Rowland, and I'm your host. On today's podcast, I'll be sharing some highlights from a July 2017 interview with the divine Will Berlinghoff. Will has a BA in psychology from Calgary. He's a multi-dimensional counsellor, a channeler, and a visionary mystic. Will has been the voice of cosmic awareness for over 13 years. Now, some of you may already know this, but cosmic awareness is the force of consciousness that expressed itself through Edgar Cayce, and who again speaks today through Will as the world goes through a time of extreme transformation. For those wanting deep personal insights, Will's channeling can result in profound spiritual, psychological and emotional healing and self-growth and development. He is also a multidimensional psychologist and counsellor and offers a unique technique of therapy that he has developed called Trinary Regression Therapy. Enjoy our first set of highlights from this interview. that you channel a stream of consciousness mm. known as cosmic awareness aka the divine consciousness would you mm-hmm. tell us how you initiated contact with this energy and then who or what this divine consciousness is oh okay that's a interesting answer because it isn't a short answer no i'm not expecting <laughs> a short one <laughs> yeah it's not like i started last week or last year No, I've been involved with the Cosmic Awareness Consciousness for almost 40 years now. Wow, that's a long time. That's right. That doesn't mean, though, that I've been channeling for 40 years. I've been channeling now that force in consciousness that is known as Cosmic Awareness for about 11 years. Mm -hmm. But I was part of an organization before that that went back to the 70s and that organization out of America was called Cosmic Awareness Communications and uh, there were different people who were the uh, voice or the channel of that force in consciousness known as Cosmic Awareness which allegedly is the same force that spoke through Edgar Casey, the famous American prophet, ah, the, the sleeping the prophet. Sleeping prophet, yes, yes, I the know sleeping that. Prophet. But it didn't identify itself at that time as cosmic awareness. This this is something that developed later. And one can always question that, but this is my understanding that it was the same energy or the same consciousness. So I was a member of that organization for over 30 years. And during that time, of course, I got the monthly updates or newsletters of channeling that this in, uh, individual by name Paul Shockley did for that which is cosmic awareness. So I had a background in it, but at the same time, for myself, I was a tarot card reader. I graduated from university so that I could go out there and become a tarot reader. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think you you choose to read tarot, it just happens to you, a mental kind of comes along, don't they? That's right, and tarot had always fascinated me, even in university, that's when I got my first deck. And I developed the capacity to channel while I was doing readings. I never did it in the traditional way. In fact, when I first started and I was self-taught, I got quickly to a point where I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm picking other information up. And I trusted myself enough at that time to just give that information to the client. That proved to be important to the eventual process of channeling cosmic awareness because I already had a trust that I was receiving information from a source that was beyond me, okay? And then in 2005, the same organization, Cosmic Awareness Communication, or CAC as they're also known, um, their uh, interpreter for Cosmic Awareness, Paul Shockley had left by then, and they needed someone else. And uh, I was asked if I could do a kind of synopsis of the year ahead. This was at the tail end of 2005. And that was the first time cosmic awareness came through. And I didn't intend it. I didn't go, okay, I'm going to channel cosmic awareness. Mm. I just 
started to give information because I have developed my own psychic powers as an individual. And suddenly this energy seemed to, I don't want to say take over, that would be wrong, but seemed to participate in the process with me. Mm -hmm. And it identified itself as cosmic awareness, a force in consciousness that I was well acquainted with. Yes, yes. And That's it went awareness. there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I actually became for that organization the interpreter or channel of cosmic awareness for that organization, which did a monthly newsletter. So that's when that started, tail end of 2005-2006. Now, I have since left that organization. You know how it is that sometimes life takes you in directions other than where you think you're going? Well, you, you outgrow certain things too. Exactly. And uh, without going into it, I basically understood that I needed to kind of go in another direction than the organization was going. Yes. And we parted on amicable terms, but I continued to channel cosmic awareness, but not any longer in affiliation with CAC. Right. Okay. So that's the story. Oh, that's, <laughs> kind of. That's a good story. What exactly is channeling and do you require an audience to channel to draw on collective energy? I've, I've been to a couple of um, channeling sessions where I've left and two days later I've, I've recovered because the, my energy has been completely sucked out of my body. Is this the same with you? Not at all. Not at all. Good to um, <laughs> no, it, you know, channeling is a wide open area. And it's only in the last, uh, oh, I don't know, 20 years that we've come to know channelers, maybe 30 years. It, it more started with the, the Michael, Archangel Michael, people who were starting to come out in the late 80s, early 90s as channels for that entity or force. And, and now there's a number of different entities that people allegedly channel. I have some difficulty with this, and this is this is the conundrum here, that I channel, and yet I, I must admit that one should always be suspicious of channeling, okay? And those who claim to be channeling this person or that person, this entity or that being. The reason is the CIA, now this is going to go on to the lunatic bridge, okay? Now go for it. <laughs> okay, the, the CIA and other uh, agencies of that nature well, the CIA specifically has that which is known as PSYOPs. Mm -hmm. And they have been for quite some time developing a psychiatric, uh, well, not psychiatric, but uh, um, what's the best term for it? It's just they have a way of manipulating yes. the forces in consciousness. Yes. And many of these alleged channels are actually the product of this um, manipulation by sources other than spirit or divine source. No, I know, okay? I know exactly what you're talking about. I have a columnist that's gone through uh, one of their programs and it's it's actually quite horrific what they did to her. Oh, wow. Then, then you know them yeah. really yeah. most firsthand. And remote viewing is part of that too. Yes. Well, that's what she calls herself, an ex-remote viewer. An ex -remote, ah, okay. yeah. So and uh, yeah, so she's some of the stories I've heard from her. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they. I can't discuss them. We're, she's actually. No, no, I understand. Yeah, she's mm -hmm. just come on as a new columnist in the magazine, and we're slowly um, airing them all. You know, one one issue at a time, just to, to get it out there. But we have to be very careful the the order we do it. And um, the next issue, we're talking about her. Scientology and the Matrix as well. Oh, that's, like that, that's a big one, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so yes, I, know, I know exactly what you're what you're referring to there. Good, good, and that's why, and this is a, a fundamental point of CA Cosmic Awareness that I've been with ever since I started in the earliest days. That Cosmic Awareness has always said, do not simply blindly accept anything that is told to you not even from this awareness. It has always asked us to question what even it brings forward. And I say it because it's a collective consciousness. It's not a person, it's not an entity, okay? 
So, so that's always been my standard. I have always questioned it all. I've always been open to it, but not necessarily say that I believe it because it was spoken by cosmic awareness. Mm. But what I can say is that over the many years, that which comes through my source is often proven from sources outside of myself. I have channeled information that I just think is so extreme and so weird. Yes. And then lo and behold, a year later, I'll hear it somewhere else, quite independent of that. But going back, back to your question. So anyway, uh, with cosmic awareness, because it has that attitude that it does not require you to be a believer, but asks quite the opposite, and because I have never been drained by it, but energized. And I'm not energized from the people around me because most of my channeling I'm just doing on my own. Okay? Part of our, we have a website, uh, rainbowphoenix.com.au. Get that in. <laughs> but I do for the members, because it is a membership uh, website also, I do a series of questions they send in. So I'm just doing it between myself and the questioner. Mm -hmm. So I never have an audience. Sometimes I do. You know, you know I do because you attended last year. Yes, paradigm. But mm -hmm. and that works all all right. So I just allow this information. Now another difference for me as a channeler is I'm not taken over. I'm not just depossessed from my body. I don't go and take a hiatus somewhere out there. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm very much in the body and very much aware of what cosmic awareness is saying. That is but it's, different. Hmm. Yes? That is different from other channelers I've, I've experienced. They, as you say, they do, they vacate the, the, the shell and mm -hmm. let the, the, the entity or the spirit in and then they come back after and start asking the audience what happened. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that is a traditional thing. Edgar Casey, of course, worked that way. He went to sleep, hence the title. Um, but no, I, I feel it more like, I say it this way, I'm in the back seat and I let cosmic awareness be the driver and I try not to be a bad, bad back seat driver. <laughs> so I didn't explain it. But I'm very aware and I can pop in and out so quickly. It's like one second I'm allowing this energy to come through me and I do distinctly feel a connection being made when I do connect with cosmic awareness. And then I pop back into normal, normal, whatever that is, uh, reality, and I'm able to then engage just as we are right now. So I don't lose myself, nor has it ever been required. What I feel is I actually have expanded my consciousness into that which is my multidimensional nature. We all are multidimensional beings. And cosmic awareness is then part of me, or I am part of it. Yes. And in this expansion of my capacity to hold a higher energetic source, that is how cosmic awareness comes through me. But I am then part of that, which is cosmic awareness, yes. as it is part of me, vice, you know, vice versa. I think I, I like your version of channeling a lot better than what mm. I experienced previously. Mostly mm. because you obviously don't have an impact on the audience, um, which, which is... I wasn't quite prepared the first time I went to um, a mediumship or a channeling um, session and mm -hmm. as I said it laid me out flat for about two days and um, mm -hmm. and everyone I was with you know basically could barely function and at work it was mm -hmm. um, yeah it's so yeah as you say there's various types of channeling out there but absolutely I, and that kind of channeling if I could quickly uh, intercede is a uh, negative that's a dark energy whoever was the channel and i don't know the person and i'm not going to make a judgment but as an outsider observing what you're saying i would have to say if you were left in such a state mm -hmm. what you encountered was something that was a vampiric energy psychic vampirism yeah it was and, it was extreme mm -hmm. so i do not believe that the client or the participant who receives the channeling should ever come out of there feeling like you would have described. In fact, I can honestly say most people I channel for, because I do do uh, personal readings, of course, come out feeling quite the opposite. 
energized, inspired, motivated, uh, enlightened to whatever degree by the answers and the insight, the tremendous insight that cosmic awareness provides even at a very personal level. So that to me is my standard. Oh, and I like your standard. So many spiritual philosophers <laughs> believe that we can manifest our environment and our reality and that we can decide whether to live in a good or an evil world. Um, do you mm -hmm. agree with that, Will? Can we manifest? Yeah, give you a solid yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we want to or if we don't. <laughs> Both, actually, because it actually is so. I do believe it is so. But that is quite di different than being able to consciously access that in a way that we can just go, Bing, and there it is, okay? We have to remember that we have come into an experience, and that experience happens to be of a 3D, third-dimensional nature. We are spirit. We are spiritual beings who are housed in a physical body, engaged in what appears to be a physical reality. But to come into this reality in the first place, we have to kind of agree that we're going to play by the rules of the game. This is a game. This is all a physical manifestation of a game of consciousness, yes. all right? But it is nonetheless real to us because when we agree to come into this reality, we also agree because of the experiment in consciousness that is represented by the third dimensional state of being, we agree that we are going to be limited and restricted and confined and defined by the rules of this third dimensional reality. Therefore, we forget that we are spiritual beings. Instead, we wonder all of our lives, um, what's going to happen to me when I die? Yeah. Do I have a soul? <laughs> you know, Instead of having a strength of, of understanding so strong that when we come into this physical reality, right from the beginning, we know we are spirit beings from a higher dimensional state. As I said, we're multidimensional. Okay? Now, because we are limited by the indoctrination of the system, and we could call it social conditioning if you want, more extreme is brainwashing, yep. okay? But in any event, we are taught right from the beginning of what we can and certainly cannot do in this physical reality. And believe it, our belief of what is possible is what defines our creative capacity. And most of us cannot believe that we can do what you have asked or said of creating our own reality out there, of manifesting, I want abundance, bang, here's $300,000 on the table in front of me. Mm. Most would say that's, that's absurd, you can't do it. We can do it, but only if we have achieved a level of our own personal awareness and understanding and even enlightenment to the fact that we are more than just this restricted, confined human being. And that is the exact point we stand on now as a, a, a civilization moving forward. We can look at our reality that is being manipulated around us and see how it is one of limitation. And we can also start to understand that it's limitation because I accept the limitation. And if I am the creator being, and I accept the limitation of my beliefs that are force-fed to me by a group that do have greater understanding and awareness who are working from the shadow, and I limit myself, then of course I will not be able to manifest in that way that we have a capacity to do if we go beyond the barrier, beyond the veil of forgetfulness even. Okay? No, no, I, I get that very, very well. As well as channeling cosmic awareness, you're also a psychic medium. Is that the correct terminology? Yeah. Um, <laughs> is that correct terminology? Uh, yes, I guess it is. 
I have developed my own psychic abilities, absolutely. That's and right. mm -hmm. at all times I, I have access to that, yes. I, um, I find it sometimes a little difficult to differentiate between the channeling and the psychic medium side, unless, um, yeah, because there are subtle differences, but then, there, yeah. Mm -hmm. There you, definitely are. Mm. Do you combine both of your gifts when performing a reading, or has your more rudimentary skills fallen by the wayside now that you're able to talk directly to spirit? So, obviously, tarot probably isn't a predominant part of what you do in a reading anymore. No, I, I don't. Now, there is another factor for that. <laughs> One That factor is I happen to be visually impaired oh, to an extreme okay. degree. <laughs> I'm actually legally blind. Oh, okay. okay. Well, that, that does make it hard. <laughs> Have mm. they, um, has anyone actually developed a, a tarot pack for, for blind people with Braille? I don't know. Since I don't read Braille, it wouldn't interest me anyway. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking there's a, probably a, key, a niche industry for somebody. <laughs> that would be a very interesting niche, in, in, indeed. Um, no, I love the tarot because they spoke to me, and I used to uh, work with the Arthurian tarot. You know there's hundreds of different decks now. Yeah. I started with the Rider Waite, and I learned my trade that way. And I did read for over 30 years as a professional. Um, and I found the, the Arthurian deck, and I use that a lot because I'm very drawn to Arthurian legend, mm -hmm. and it has deep implication if you understand the, the myth and legend of it all. Yes, yes. But I also found that uh, I, I just was developing all the time, as was my own personal psychic ability. So it really got to a point. I actually announced in the shop where I was working, it was a a tea shop, you know, you go and have tea and a reading. Uh, and this in Calgary, Alberta, where I come from in Canada. Oh, lovely. And, Canada. Uh, yeah? yeah? Very good. Very, very big fan of it. I've, I've done the inside passage up to, um, oh, where is it? Oh, I can't, the names up there, Skegway. And <laughs> oh, Skegway. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, up to Sunshine Coast there. Is that what yeah. you call it? <laughs> Yeah, on BC there, yeah. Mm, it's yeah. a beautiful place, and I love Banff. Is it Banff? Like a Christmas card. Yeah, yeah Banff? Yes, Banff. Banff, that's, uh, that's with two Fs. You could yes. say Banff. Ba 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 <laughs> mm. No, no that, I'm close from Banff. I'm from Calgary, which is a bit further east of Banff. But okay. I grew up going to Banff in the mountains and all that, the Rocky Mountains. So Very fortunate. Yeah, that's all part of my heritage. Mm. Now back to the tarot card, if I could, for a moment. No, no. Um, yeah, so, uh, and my own psychic ability, that's the whole thing. It, it's always been developing. And I found that since I uh, learned how to finally be a conduit for cosmic awareness, this has only enhanced my own personal psychic ability. We all have psychic ability, and I have taught psychic courses for people to develop their psychic abilities. This is such a part of us that is denied us because they don't want us to know. Now, I have to say, when I say they, I am meaning that powerful group that are hidden, that are manipulating and controlling. And it's often hard not to be paranoid in life. Yes. No, it's difficult. I, I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> exactly, but there are these groups, okay? But anyway, we all have the psychic abilities. I did uh, develop them, and, and now I can as quickly tune into something, and I really go by that feeling state. I will get a flash, and it will tell me something about, let's say, a person. I come across some person, and there's an immediate energy of, I don't like that person's energy. There's something dark there. I won't know what it is, I'll just know that's what I'm picking up on. Yes. And this is the biggest thing I try to teach people when they're developing their psychic abilities. It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. What matters is you're picking something up, you're getting some feeling, some energy. Open to that, see what that tells you. Be cautious, be aware, okay? But don't just shut it down because it's coming from this place you can't trust or it's all in my imagination, our greatest gift and tool, because it is something that is speaking to you. Yes, exactly.
So I think you've already answered our next question, which was <laughs> earlier. I asked if um, the channeling impacted you physically in any way, and I think you said it energised you. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, is there any other physical benefits post uh, a session? No, because it, it is just such a part of my everyday life now to be able to access that level of my own being that uh, it, it doesn't distinguish anymore between a definite high moment and then a definite low moment. It's like I'll step from one state into the other. Wow. And that, that is quite different, I think, than the majority do it. Yeah. Yes, definitely. It's, uh, you, you've become one with it in a way, haven't you? Well, you see, here's the thing. I think we stand at the very threshold of a complete new understanding of our spiritual nature. Up to now, I think we're taught that we have no spiritual nature, but there is a force that we have to believe in. That force is called God, and it has to be defined by certain ones who have the authority to define God, and you partake in religious uh, rituals, and you uh, go with the faith, but you aren't expected to understand it because it's beyond you. Yes. And the new way that's coming, because I do think we are on the very threshold of a spiritual revolution, is direct participation with that consciousness that exceeds the physical, that goes well beyond, and yet we are part of that. Yes. And in, in that experience, we will step forward. You've probably heard of a course that many are talking about fifth dimensional level of consciousness and we're fifth dimensional beings and it's going to open up. In fact, 2012, December 21st, the great ascension event, that was supposed to happen. Mm. All supposed to ascend up to this glorious place of fifth dimensionality and everything would change in an instant. Yep. They, so, they didn't. No, there's a lot of pissed off people, I can tell you. <laughs> So, I, I've interviewed you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yet what they don't understand is the door was opened. And since that date, and it's not that we have never had that connection with spirit, but something is starting to shift and change. And it is my belief that it is the spiritual force of our greater consciousness that we are part of that is starting to filter through more and more and more. And as that works its way in, we move from a place of religious worship to spiritual awareness and understanding. And in that place of spiritual awareness, we begin to understand we are much more than these very limited and restricted human beings that we have been taught since the beginning uh, that we were and are. Okay? So we are on the very threshold, as I've said, of that spiritual revolution. But we are also at the same time feeling the intense opposition of ones who have had power and privilege for thousands of years. And they don't want to give up this game. They have control through the manipulation in consciousness, through what we believe, what we do, how we do it, all limited to that point of reference that says human beings are incapable of doing anything you know, maybe together, if they come together under leadership of a government or a religious group or this, they will move forward. But they don't. <laughs> Not really. So I, I'm feeling that in terms of that question, yeah, we're in a very unique place in the history of humanity. And I do think that there are those level of consciousness, even from the future, that are here at this time that are guiding us through a very critical period. And that it is personal and it is your own choice of which way you're going to go. How are you going to believe? What are you going to believe that will continue to manifest the shadow and the dark side and place of restriction and pain and suffering or something elevated, something that does allow us to reach uh, beyond ourselves because we really are something more than what we are told we are. Yes, no, I agree. And I think since 2012, a lot more people have been waking up mm -hmm. to their more spiritual side and to their and listening to their bodies and well they call it their bodies but it's really their that inner voice inside a lot Absolutely. more and i know now i used to have a conversation once twice a year with people on spiritual mm -hmm. issues 
and now mm -hmm. pretty much I can't get away from people wanting to talk about it. So <laughs> that's actually encouraging. It <laughs> is. It it is, and I think I think it is an exciting time. I personally wasn't expecting the rapture in 2012 that everybody mm -hmm. was um, saying was mm -hmm. going to happen. And mm -hmm. how, what actually did happen, I agree with you. I think it was more subtle, but I think mm -hmm. it's going to have a bigger impact now. You know, mm -hmm. feels, I just feel like there's a momentum, uh, something building, you know. That's oh, absolutely. And also I would point out there also seems to be these waves of energy hitting us. Yes. Like yes. Um, we had one last year, pretty powerful one, about September or so. And I know that this September going into October, is also going to be another one of these maximum waves, and it may actually start in August with the eclipse that's coming. Oh, cool! Okay. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I've got a friend who's an astrologer, and um, they've been explaining to me the blood moons that have been happening over the last few years, and yeah. Um, yeah. there's some interesting dates when they've aligned for when the blood moons happen and when events have occurred. Yeah. Exactly. And, yeah. So there's some yeah there's some interesting. <laughs> Interesting. It's interesting times, is what I really want to say. What is also interesting to me, going back into the conspiracy field for a moment, is how these ones who are in the shadow use those dates and those events. And there's a lot of very dark, uh, well, I'll even use the word satanic groups that are out there, and they use these kind of dates and these powers that are available. Because if you are kept dumbed down and unaware that such forces exist and you as a controller know that these exist mm -hmm. but you're preventing the masses from figuring it out then does that not elevate you into position of advantage oh, yeah. Yeah. that's exactly what they've been doing for so long but the difference now is that as you have suggested more and more are starting to awaken to at least the degree they're asking questions yes they are it's you know, they're saying, this doesn't feel right to me anymore. What the heck's wrong? Well, a lot of people I know are questioning, you know, their servitude, their slavery, mm. their, um, I mean, a lot of people I would have considered muggles 10 years ago, you know, <laughs> are now, you know, completely doing, you know, about faces on a lot of issues. And I've actually yeah. had a lot of people apologize to me for a lot of comments over the years they've made because yeah. I, I've been... I started reading, I was very similar to you, I started, I had a mentor around the age of 21 that taught me the tarot and uh, taught, uh, taught me to tap into my more psychic abilities or, um, and I've, over the years I've had quite a few prophetic dreams and stuff which, mm -hmm. which the events have unfolded and you and I will have a chat about that independently sometimes because yes. I'm sure I'm going to blow you away with a couple of things that I've I've had. I, um, I bet, I bet, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, I just find it, um, it's just very, like, sit back and watch what's going to happen for me at the mm -hmm. moment because, as I said, the people that I used to think were died in the wool muggle and would never <laughs> in a million years, you know, they're logic-based accountants yeah. or doctors or, yeah. Who, who used to, you know, kind of make fun of me, right? Are now actually apologising for their behaviour, and you know, when mm -hmm. that sort of, when this is happening in today's society, you yes. know that something, you know, it, that was to me the kind of the beginning of it all, and I was like, okay, this is Absolutely. interesting. Not in a million years did I imagine that person would ever, you know, one apologise or two start to discuss consciousness with me or vibrational sure. energy or frequency or yeah, yeah. yeah but then it usually happens yeah. after they've had some kind of awakening like a, an illness <laughs> or um some kind of trauma in their family and that's that to me usually is the starting point yeah a very good friend of ours uh, she's a doctor and uh, she had a personal tragedy where her eight-year-old son or i think he was eight was killed literally in front of her uh, eyes. Car came up over the sidewalk, and you know, very, very, very. It's the kind of tragedy it's so hard to even imagine. And but in any event, that was the trigger point for her, absolutely. And she was a doctor. She was a general doctor, you know, a GP. And 
it changed her life. Not immediately. She went through years of, of things happening, and but now she's way out there and quite an amazing lady too. Yes. Because of a tragedy, and this is something that's very important. We can think sometimes, why do these things happen to us? Mm. Now, it is my understanding that we pre-exist before we come into this physical body and have this physical life. Mm -hmm. Many of us are starting to definitely accept that we probably do exist after our deaths. Mm. But very few think of existence before life and how we may have actually been coming from the level of our consciousness that says we wish to have an experience in the physical yeah. and that there is a coalescence of uh, consciousness into an identity and that identity which I call the focus personality then elects to be born into this physical body but before it even does that agreements are made mm. with all the major players of those who would be participant in our lives like so soul, we a soul contract of sorts. All contract. So we contract with our mother and father, our siblings, our extended family, the significant others, a spouse, whatever. And, and it's all like, okay, at this age, you're going to come into my life, and then this is going to happen, and we'll go off on this little tangent or on that adventure or whatever. Okay. And if we can start to begin to understand, and then here's the curiosity of it. We're also given free choice. So even though we have pre-planned everything, does not mean that everything is going to happen according to plan. Because once you're in this realm, a, a kind of mechanism, so to speak, has been in play always, and that is a degree of forgetfulness. That's what I've already said. We don't remember we're spiritual beings. Okay. It just so, feels wrong at times. Yeah. 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 So we come in and, and we're having this life and we have a choice to make and one is in accordance to the plan or the direction we're supposed to go and the other will take you off in another direction. And more often than not, people are taken off in their other directions because we live in a reality that emphasizes mental, rationality, logic. And so we don't pay attention to the emotional situation. Yeah. Instead, we think, oh, I have to do this because it's expected. Okay, so that's why we can leave this life and go back and do the whole big review thing and go, oh, I remember now I was supposed to do that, but I did this. Oh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> didn't quite get that right. So now, yeah. now I, I agree, I feel the same. Well, that's all for our podcast. Thanks for listening. And remember, if you want to support what we do, then share, subscribe, and leave a positive review over on iTunes for the open-minded skeptic. My team and I look forward to entertaining you once again in our next podcast. To check when our next podcast is, simply head over to www.tomspod.com Com. That's www.tomspod.com.